And in our business stories, Dubai Multi Commodities Center, DMCC, has recently been named Global Free Zone of the Year for SMEs by FDI magazine in the Global Free Zones of the Year rankings and awards for 2014. DMCC won the recognition based on performance over the past year, which included elements such as percentage increase in tenants, strong growth and implementation of new incentives, which gives the free zone a competitive edge. According to FDI, DMCC is not only the best economic zone in the MENA region for SMEs, but also in the world because it caters to companies of all sizes. They say worldwide the free zone market is extremely competitive. 45 free zones from across the globe participated in the rankings, including the 17 free zones that also entered the FDI Middle East and North Africa Free Zones of the Year 2014 awards earlier this year. At present, 70% of DMCC's member companies are SMEs, representing every sector, ranging from trading, shipping to recruitment, IT to advertising and fashion. In a statement, DMCC Executive Chairman Ahmed bin Sulaim attributed the landmark achievement to the vision and leadership of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and ruler of Dubai, to develop a vibrant SME sector and to take a leading position in empowering entrepreneurs. The Middle East has yet to develop a theme park on a similar scale as the USA, Europe or Asia and is currently dominated by smaller sized attractions. That's according to the latest findings from Colliers International. Theme parks are a draw card for many leading family tourism destinations. Their success plays an important role in providing a constant flow of family tourists to an area, positively impacting the hotels that are situated within or in close proximity to the parks. Collier's International's latest report, DNA of Theme Park Hotels, has revealed that attractions and water parks in the Middle East are still considerably undersized compared to the large-scale amusement parks around the world. The majority of attractions currently operating in the GCC are located in the UAE, primarily in Dubai, followed by Abu Dhabi, Sharjah and Ras Al Khaimah. And the largest in the region is Dubai's Global Village. According to Colliers, the region is not lacking in amusement and entertainment centres. However, the concept of having lodging facilities within or close to the de destination is still underdeveloped, with only a limited number of attractions having a dedicated hotel catering to visitor demand. Traditionally, the, the theme parks uh, that we have in the region are considered what we call attraction as supporting facilities to mix your development, the like of uh, Ski Dubai for the Mall of the Emirates, the Wild Wadi as a support to the uh, uh, waterfront resort like the Jumeirah Beach Hotel or the Aqua Venture as a support of the Atlantis uh, Hotel. So there were attraction to support facilities. This major uh, development require mature infrastructure, and that's what Dubai has been investing heavily, from uh, a new airport, a Maktoum airport, open uh, last year, to, you know, completion to the metro and uh, road infrastructure. Globally, hotels in and around large-scale theme parks are primarily built to support the destination and capitalize on the constant flow of tourists generated. Here in the region, the common concept when developing a leisure attraction is to construct it as an added leisure facility within a resort property. According to Filippo Sonna, this latest report identifies an untapped opportunity for developers and investors looking to build hotels in and around these large-scale theme parks to support the destination and capitalize on the constant flow of tourists. The opportunity for uh, investors is that you know, this will have the, the hotels and the retail particularly will draw major attention from the private sector, from private investors in developing assets within and around these theme parks. So, you know, the interest will be very high. But this will be a one-of-a-kind destination in the region and one-of-a-kind destination which fits within the global benchmarks, like the like of Sentosa Island in Singapore, the one in Hong Kong and Florida, this uh, world. This will drive the mice business to Dubai and potentially uh, getting Dubai to achieve its target of 20 million visitors ahead of the 2020. 
During the first three days of Jitex Technology Week, Do signed a memorandum of understanding with Dubai Silicon Oasis Authority to provide the telecom infrastructure needed for the Silicon Park, which is under construction, and other projects. In line with this, Do will explore the development of solutions, including providing telecom services for the Silicon Oasis' first integrated smart city project. In addition, it also partnered with Dubai Municipality for increased interconnectivity in the Emirate. It also tested the world's highest processing rate of 900 megabytes per second to show the future-proof readiness of Do's 4G long-term evolution LTE network. Do's Executive Vice President of Network Development and Operations, Salim al Balushi, says once this has been commercially launched, it will offer ultra-mobile broadband experience to customers. It also showcased the smart home with their technology and solutions from opening and closing curtains and doors to operating lights and entertainment appliances to even changing one's window view. Al-Balushi says seamless connectivity and cost-effective solutions are keys to encouraging residents to become, to become live smart. In August, they announced speeding up the rollout of 4G due to the rising demand in addition to a 25% network expansion. This will provide customers better speed from download, so they, their experience is seamless experience in using their social application, social media application, and viewing streaming capabilities, and customer doing business, as well as it will optimize the cost. So as we go higher in bandwidth, higher, as our investment become, uh, at, uh, the cost per byte will be cheaper, and the customer will benefit from both, both factors, from experience and from cost. Last night, the Oscars of the retail industry recognised the best in the sector across the region. Outstanding achievers and leading performers in marketing, retail and design across the MENA region were honoured at a gala dinner at the Ritz-Carlton DIFC on Monday night. This was part of the three-day recon conference and exhibition. Organised by the regional trade body representing the shopping centre industry, the Middle East Council of Shopping Centres says the highlights this year include the two newly added award categories. The Retail Excellence re recognises innovation in a retail environment, while the Retail Professional of the Year honours the retailer whose operation is determined to be the benchmark for retail excellence. Now celebrating its 20 years in the region with 45 member countries worldwide, MESSC CEO David McAdam says the Retail Awards play a prominent role in encouraging healthy competition in the region and offer opportunities for shopping centres and retailers to showcase their successes. One of the best things about our conference is the fact that we get the best speakers from around the world to tell us the leading trends. They explain it, they uh, have a show, we watch along on it, and we're learning about the latest and the greatest, what's winning, what's winning customers, what's winning customer loyalty, and what's actually, and not just in this region, but also all the way around the world. So what we've learned is now is that there's a whole new experiential type of retail that's coming and it'll be in this region very, very soon.